Created by Taylor Sheridan, known for Sicario and Hell or High Water, Yellowstone has become the biggest drama series on cable TV, following a family out west whose focus is protecting their ranch in Montana from various rivals trying to take their land. With season five about to hit, it's time to take a look back at everything that's gone down for John Dutton and his family. This is the Yellowstone story so far. The show opens by giving a glimpse into the Dutton family and their roles. Everyone plays their part to help the family. John Dutton, played by Kevin Costner, is a name known in Montana. He's the big boss, landowner who basically runs everything. His eldest son, Lee, is a livestock agent and plans to take over the ranch one day. And his son, Jamie Dutton, is an attorney who struggles at times on thinking like his dad. His only daughter, Beth, is a savvy yet chaotic businesswoman who doesn't take no crap from anyone. And John's other son, Casey Dutton, is a former Navy SEAL turned horseman and ranch hand, who married Monica Long and together have a son and live on the nearby Broken Rock Indian Reservation. The pilot episode doesn't waste any time getting into the brutal difficulties of what the Duttons deal with in season one. In the first episode, you find out that cattle from the Duttons' property wandered onto the reservation, mysteriously past a fence that was somehow taken down, which ends up sparking a war with the Native Americans, led by the new chief, Thomas Rainwater. Cattle wandered onto res land, John. Yeah, well. Cattle don't know the difference between your land and ours. This leads to deadly consequences. A gunfight breaks out following a plan from the Duttons as they safely moved their herd of cattle back onto their own land at nightfall. And John's son Lee is killed by Monica's brother Robert during the fight. <laughs> and Casey then ends up killing Robert out of self-defense, but hides it from Monica. <laughs> Throughout the first season, conversations come up about Jamie running for attorney general, something that John supports at first but then changes his mind about because he doesn't quite trust Jamie. He ends up supporting someone else for the position. Politics play a heavy hand in Yellowstone, but the show consistently finds ways to bring the beauty of Montana and the daily ranch work to the forefront. Characters like Rip Wheeler as the foreman of the ranch and other ranch hands like Lloyd, Colby, and Jimmy keep the daily side of ranch life interesting. In Yellowstone, certain ranch hands and wranglers are more than just hourly workers. They are branded by the ranch foreman with the Yellowstone Y, something they are given when they have a second chance in life following a jail sentence. The brand is something they need to live up to, and it connects them all for life. In episode four, it ends up coming to light that John had cancer, but he assures everyone it's now gone. Show creator Taylor Sheridan makes his first appearance on the show in episode five as the cowboy and horse trader Travis. His role ends up expanding as the show progresses, but later on in season one, Monica ends up getting a head injury while trying to break up a fight at the school she teaches at on the reservation. She goes through a difficult recovery and ends up leaving Casey, who then moves back to the ranch. Another potential threat comes into the light with a land developer, Dan Jenkins, who tried to purchase land from John and later partnered up with Thomas Rainwater to build a casino and hotel. Casey, Rip, and the other Dutton ranch hands end up sending Dan Jenkins a very severe warning at the end of the season in an attempt to back him off. Season 1 threads a lot of details into its storylines, and it ends with big changes happening for the Duttons, while we get glimpses of the extreme ways the ranch handles outside threats. As the show dives into Season 2, it solidifies the idea that no matter what, John Dutton never wants the ranch and his land to sell, even if it means the family must struggle financially. As we continue on, Casey is getting settled back at the ranch, wanting to focus on being a cowboy to help his son Tate have something to look up to. In the first episode, the Wranglers and ranch hands get beat up at a local bar, and Rip and Casey go and show that you don't mess with the Dutton Ranch by letting a bull loose in the bar and proceeding to beat up the bullies. But John collapses to the ground, spits up blood, and ends up having a ruptured ulcer. A livestock veterinarian does surgery on him right there at the ranch, and he's later airlifted to a hospital to recover. Overall, he's just glad it wasn't his cancer coming back. What a fucking mess. Beth starts working more closely with a real estate firm to buy up land surrounding the Dutton Ranch so others cannot purchase the land and develop it. Following her recovery, Monica gets a job at a university teaching about the colonization of America, but she's able to do so from an indigenous perspective, which is welcomed by the dean, although she has to put a student in his place on the very first day after he throws racist remarks at her. I can remove you from this class and fail you or I can send you before the dean for violating the student code of conduct. These are all things that can alter the course of your life. 
John gives Casey the responsibility of now running the ranch, meaning Rip is demoted to a ranch hand, and back in the bunkhouse with the other guys. Casey and Rip decide to brawl, with John's approval, so Case earns Rip's respect and everyone else's in now running the ranch. We made him earn it. Thank you. Now I need you two to get along. Some new real estate moguls come into the picture, known as the Beck Brothers, who threaten Dan Jenkins and later try to befriend John and the Duttons to team up with them so they can all fight against Dan and Thomas Rainwater's casino build. Well, you've got lots to think about. Due to Jamie not having any financial backing to run for attorney general, he comes to the ranch and announces to his dad and siblings that he withdrew from the race, which gains a respectful response and an offer to sit down with him and enjoy dinner, minus Beth, who shows how little she cares about him. <laughs> At the beginning of episode 4, we see that hundreds of the Dutton's cattle are found dead in a field. Lloyd points out that clovers have been dropped in the field, which could be the culprit. And John knows it didn't happen by chance. So you're thinking that somebody flew a plane over here and dropped clover on your cattle in the middle of the night, John? Think about that. We have. John calls an investigation into who killed his cattle while working with the local sheriff and his longtime friend Donnie, who then quickly makes Casey a deputy to have more hands to help investigate. Jamie then gets into hot water with his family yet again and admits to Beth and John that he gave an interview about his dad to a reporter, which, if it comes to light, could be destructive for the Duttons. John gets confirmation after seeing Dan that the Beck brothers are the ones who poisoned and killed their cattle, and he starts to plan payback. Jamie goes to see the reporter, Sarah, trying to get her to drop her story. She declines and pisses Jamie off, so he runs after her and brutally attacks her, leaving her dead on the ground. A shocked Jamie immediately heads back to the ranch, finds Rip, and asks him to help clean up his mess. Rip agrees to help, and they take care of it without leaving any trace. John and Casey go riding early the next morning and talk about John's wife and Casey's mom, who died when he was younger. Something John doesn't bring up often, but is a big part of his struggles throughout the series. Been half a man without her. John randomly notices a gun is missing from his cabinet, and he and Rip go and find Jamie out in the field holding it, preparing to end his life after murdering the reporter. John talks with him and explains how he can get past this. The old you's dead the moment you let it go. Jamie finally agrees and decides to move into the bunkhouse and learn to become a cowboy, living an entirely different life than he's used to. Monica decides to get back together with Casey, and she moves on to the ranch along with their son Tate, who tells John he wants a horse so he can be a cowboy someday. Beth and Rip meet up on the roof of the main Dutton house, sipping whiskey and talking about their lives. They've been close for years and they embrace one another in this spot, showing the love they have for each other. The following day, Beth and her assistant are working late at her office when they're all of a sudden attacked by masked gunmen. <laughs> Beth starts stabbing the first one who grabs her, and they continue to beat and tie her up. Beth managed to text Rip for help as she saw the men walking in, and he shows up and instantly kills the men. Although the attackers are dead, Rip ends up getting shot in the side, and John, Casey, Jimmy, and an unknown doctor show up at the office to get both Rip and Beth medical attention. John suspects it was the Beck brothers who ordered the attack, so the Duttons send a brutal message right back with what remains of their men. John then tells Casey they're going to kill the Beck brothers to solve these problems. We're going to kill him, son. The following day, John, Dan, and Thomas Rainwater all meet at the Dutton Ranch and agree to work together to kill the Beck brothers for the safety of not just their businesses, but their own families. The Beck brothers end up having a guard shot on the reservation, and John heads over with Casey and Jamie to help Thomas Rainwater. John tells Jamie he needs a lawyer right now, and he switches back to his main family role. The end of the episode cuts to a photo of Casey and Monica's son Tate with the Beck brothers discussing who to go after next. Monica is shopping in a boutique in town and is treated horribly by a racist saleswoman who accuses Monica of shoplifting. I need to look in your purse and get a warrant. And insults Native Americans. The saleswoman calls the police and forces Monica to do a strip search, even though there is no proof she would have taken anything. Monica calls Beth and asks her to come to the boutique for help on the matter. I need help. When Beth arrives, she does so in nothing less than Beth Dutton fashion, by pointing out to the police that they are wrongfully using the Fourth Amendment. I'm no lawyer but I believe it's the Fourth Amendment that deals with unlawful search and seizure. The police leave and Beth locks the door, strolls around the shop smashing glass cases and demands the saleswoman be treated how she treated Monica by forcing her to undress and try on new clothes. Monica finally tells Beth to stop and Beth agrees. You're lucky she has a conscience. At night, John reminds Tate he needs to go feed his new horse before he can have ice cream. Tate heads out to the stables to do so but never returns. 
Everyone drops what they're doing to search for Tate, and in the morning hours, they see tire tracks in a field. Casey runs to follow the tracks and finds Tate's boot in the mud. In the finale of season two, it has been confirmed that Tate has now been kidnapped and Casey vows to get his son back no matter what it takes. Thomas Rainwater offers one of his men to help, named Mo. Casey goes to the Beck brothers' house with a warrant regarding the cattle deaths. Casey shoots one of the Beck brothers and gets him to admit they did kidnap Tate. Where's my son? Where is he? And that they hired the Montana Free Militia for the job. He shares where their location is while begging for his life. I promised my wife I'd kill you. All a man has is his word. The Duttons and Livestock Police go to the spot where the militia is at nightfall and put their plan in place by lighting up the area. The militia are clearly expecting them and are ready. John finds the last Beck brother and shoots him straight away, demanding to know where his grandson is. He tells him where to find Tate in Whitefish, Montana. Casey then finds Tate in Whitefish. He tells him repeatedly that it's him and he's here to take him home. It's daddy. It's daddy. The livestock agent says a trauma specialist is on the way, and Tate clearly has a difficult road ahead of him. At the end of season two, we now know the Beck brothers are dead and out of the picture. However, everything they laid in place with the militia against the Duttons is not wrapped up yet, and there's a lot of recovering Tate and others will need to do in season three to move on. As season three gets underway, John has the cowboys build a new barn seven miles out from the main area so they can have closer eyes on the cattle going forward. John starts bringing Tate out with him and spending more time in nature as Monica thinks it would be therapeutic for him following his trauma. The Duttons find out a new real estate company called Market Equities is buying up land surrounding the Duttons, with Beth discovering plans that they have to build an airport and ski resort and eventually turn the land into a city. She finds out a new neighbor named Rourke has something to do with the sudden interest in the area. Meanwhile, Jimmy competes in a rodeo, a passion he has quickly fallen for but ends up in the hospital. John tells him he'll take care of the hospital costs, but Jimmy has to promise not to do rodeo anymore. No more rodeo. The governor of Montana, Linnell Perry, comes to the ranch and tells Casey she needs him to step up as livestock commissioner. That's the job. And she's going to appoint Jamie as attorney general so Montana's natural lands can stay where they are, without being turned into big cities. Casey is hesitant, but he knows he has to take the position. Because all of this disappears if you don't. Rip and Beth's intimate relationship continues to grow, and Beth shares something personal with him, that she wants to be his wife, but she cannot have children. Rip looks at her and explains that all he needs in life is her. You're all I need. While driving, the Wranglers stumble upon a group of bikers from California who cut their fence to have beers on the side of the road across from Yellowstone National Park. Rip drives up separately and sees the crew getting beat by the bikers, and he smashes right into their motorcycles, without a care in the world. Rip tells the bikers not to come back and that if they do, they'll get buried right there in the field. I'm gonna give you one last chance. You leave now or you never leave. Sure enough, they come back at night with gasoline and John is sitting in the field. Rip, Casey, and the Wranglers step out with automatic weapons and they throw shovels at them all and make them dig their own graves. I don't want you to leave. I want you to dig. John makes them all get in them and threatens that if they ever come back, they'll disappear in the holes. In episode five, Jamie gets sworn in as attorney general and Casey takes over as livestock commissioner. John brings up to Beth her hatred for Jamie and she decides to finally tell him that she got pregnant when she was a teenager and went to Jamie for help. And they got her an abortion, but the clinic also made her sterile at the same time, which makes John furious. Dad, wait, wait, quit moving! In episode six, a young Native American woman goes missing and her body is later found. Monica feels helpless being in the Dutton house, so she goes out trying to help the situation, so more women on the reservation don't keep disappearing. Thomas Rainwater sees her out in the open area and pulls over, telling her ways she can be involved and help lead the fight, but to be careful out by herself in that area. In a twist of events, Jamie finds out he was adopted by the Duttons and confronts John about it who proceeds to explain who his birth parents were and how John and his wife took him in to protect him. Monica lies to Casey to head out and volunteer for the day. She ends up being part of a sting operation to uncover the men who have been attacking and killing indigenous women on the reservation. They end up catching the man as he attempts to attack Monica, while Mo shoots a sniper rifle from afar and kills him on the spot. Jamie gets an offer for 50,000 acres of the Dutton land, which would be a total of $500 million substantially more than what future offers could be, and Beth agrees to share the offer with their dad, which he declines. I can't sell it. Jamie then gets details on his birth dad, Garrett Randall, who killed his mother after he was born and pays him a visit to learn who he is. 
Colby and the newest Wrangler, Teeter, end up getting attacked by cowboys who were paid to cause trouble with the Duttons. John, Casey, and Rip plan retaliation, and John tells them to take them to the train station, which is code for get rid of them so they never return. During the finale of Season 3, someone plans an attack on the Duttons, and they are all blindsided in various spots. Beth is at her office when a package comes addressed to her. She quickly tells her assistant not to open it, yet it's too late and a bomb explodes. Casey is in his office and hears gunshots, and immediately throws his desk up for protection and gets ready for a shootout. John is stopped on the side of the road helping a mother and child with a flat tire, and a van stops, the back opens, and someone starts firing at him and the others on the road. John gets shot and is on the side of the road with crows circling him. The finale ends with a cliffhanger as we don't know who ordered the attack or if all the Duttons will survive. Season 3 has the heaviest cliffhanger we've seen so far and leaves many unknowns for the Duttons, specifically the leader everyone looks up to for answers. Season 4 picks up right where the Season 3 finale left off, with the attack on the Duttons, showing more details of what happened. After Casey flips his desk over, two gunmen come in with assault rifles, and Casey tosses over a stun grenade, and then shoots them both. He was already on the phone with Monica, and he tells her to get to the bunkhouse with Tate immediately. Rip finds John sitting on the side of the road with gunshot wounds, and calls Casey, saying his dad won't make it all the way to the hospital. Casey calls in a medical helicopter to pick them up as they're driving towards the hospital. Beth stumbles out of her office, building covered in blood and burns, unaware of what exactly happened and how bad a shape she's in. Monica and Tate are trying to get out of the main house when they're attacked by a man in a clown mask. Tate ends up shooting him with a shotgun to save his mom's life. Casey and the sheriff are driving to John when they see the van whose passengers shot his dad. Casey slams into it on a back road, which leads to a gunfight with the three men inside. Casey ends up getting shot and falls to the ground as help is called in. Some two months later, we find out that John has been in a coma. He doesn't remember everything that happened the day of the attack. Beth sees him at the hospital, and shortly after, he gets relocated to the house to continue his recovery. Back at the ranch, John sees Casey in heavy camo and sniping gear, and Casey explains they killed everyone who had a hand in attacking the Duttons, but they are still looking for who ordered the attack. That's what we figure out next. One possibility of the mastermind behind it all is Rourke with market equities. So Rip finds him and throws a rattlesnake at him while he's fishing, leaving him poisoned and dead. Once things are a little more back to normal, John hires Travis the horse trader to build a team of riders to represent Yellowstone in an attempt to expand the business and make more money. John also sends Jimmy with Travis down to Texas to work on a more demanding ranch, as he broke his word, ending up back in the hospital after promising not to rodeo anymore. Jim is sent down there to become a real cowboy, as John says, and this is also setting up a spinoff for the upcoming series, 6666. Beth meets a kid named Carter at the hospital. He has no family and nowhere to go, and wants to stay with Beth and Rip. Rip hesitantly gives him a job on the ranch and is making him earn his place like he had to do. Who is that? You, 20 years ago. The Duttons are still trying to figure out who ordered the brutal attack on their family, and Casey and John think it could be the militia. So Casey, the sheriff, and others hunt down each one, as John wants them all dead. Thomas Rainwater and his assistant sniper extraordinaire, Mo, let John know they found out who ordered the hit on the Duttons. John doesn't know the name, but takes that info to Casey, and has him get Jamie involved to get an interview with the guy and find out exactly who is behind it. Jamie finds out the person who ordered the hit on his family was a past cellmate of his birth dad, Garrett, and he grows suspicious. Jamie confronts his dad with a gun, demanding to know if he tried to have the Duttons killed. Garrett admits he did. You tried to kill my family. That's not your family. This is your family. And that he will continue to do it until he succeeds. Jamie keeps this from John, though, who thinks it was still the white supremacist group. Governor Perry decides she is going to run for Senate, and she tells John she thinks Jamie should replace her. He disagrees, saying Jamie is not trustworthy, and he offers to run for governor himself, knowing it's the only way to keep real estate developers from taking over his land and turning the valley into the next big city. Governor Perry calls a press conference in which Jamie thinks she's backing him for governor of Montana, but instead she announces John and he walks out and shares his belief of wanting to keep Montana what it is. If it's progress you seek, do not vote for me. 
Episode 8 ends with a shootout at the local diner as John and Rip pull up and notice something's wrong, sneak into the place, and see multiple men inside holding everyone hostage. Sheriff Donnie ends up getting shot and killed, with John needing to call his daughter and tell her the tragic news. In the finale of season 4, Beth randomly brings a priest, who we find out she kidnapped, to the ranch and has him marry Rip and herself, right then and there with only John and Lloyd present. Casey goes on a vision quest, looking for answers about his life's path with the help of Thomas Rainwater, Monica, and Mo. He finishes his quest after he sees two paths in front of him, and Mo comes and tells him it's time to go back home. Beth goes to the Attorney General's office to demand answers from Jamie about the Dutton family attack, thinking he was connected to it. Jamie ends up admitting he found out his birth father, Garrett, ordered them all be killed by the Montana Free Militia. Beth questions why he hasn't killed his birth dad yet after knowing that, and she then gives him options to remedy the situation. But there's really only one solution she gives him. Dare to hear it. To kill Garrett. Jamie goes to see his birth dad. They exchange some pleasant words. They both say they love one another. I love you too, dad. And then Jamie shoots him once in the head and immediately breaks down and cries. He then brings the body to the train station to get rid of it, but Beth is waiting there with the camera and snaps a photo now basically owning Jamie for the future. Season 4 wraps with some closure as Jamie's birth dad is finally out of the picture, but we have no idea where things will go with John running for governor at the beginning of Season 5. Are the Duttons finally safe? Or will there be another slew of enemies who come into the picture? Where do you think things will go in Yellowstone Season 5? Let's discuss in the comments, and for even more stories so far, be sure to like and subscribe to IGN.